Welcome to the Dry Bones Ministries special podcast series on the consecration to St. Joseph. My name is Father Adam Potter and today is day five where we'll be looking at the power of the Holy Spirit and how St. Joseph was uniquely fueled by that spirit. Although we're already up to day five, I was thinking if you know someone who would benefit from this, please invite them, join them. Our Lord is longing for more souls and that St. Joseph right now is on the move, uh, stirring hearts to come to know and love his son even more. So praise God if more people can come on board. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Veni Sancte Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams which sweetly flow in silent streams from thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the poor, O come, thou source of all our store, come, fill our hearts with love. O thou of comforters the best, O thou the soul's delightful guest, the pilgrim's sweet relief. Rest art thou in our toil most sweet, refreshment in the noonday heat, and solace in our grief. O blessed light of life thou art, fill with thy light the inmost heart of those who hope in thee. Without thy Godhead nothing can, have any price or worth in man, nothing can harmless be. Lord, wash our sinful stains away, refresh from heaven our barren clay, our wounds and bruises heal. To thy sweet yoke our stiff necks bow, warm with thy fire our hearts of snow, our wandering feet recall. Grant to thy faithful dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word, the sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace that we, in peace may die and ever be, in joy before thy face. Amen. And now our prayer to St. Joseph, patron of chaste souls. St. Joseph, father and guardian of virgins, into whose faithful keeping were entrusted innocence itself, Christ Jesus and Mary, the virgin of virgins, I pray and beseech thee through Jesus and Mary those pledges so dear to thee, to keep me from all uncleanness, and to grant that my mind may be untainted, my heart pure, and my body chaste. Help me always to serve Jesus and Mary in perfect chastity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, well, I'm really excited because today we come to this um, third and almost concluding part of our beginning of the litany. We'll end it uh, tomorrow with the the Trinity in this portion of it. But today it's the Holy Spirit. Holy God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. And I guess I wanted to start just with a a question considering you, where you're at, and your relationship with God. Out of all the persons of the Holy Trinity, which one would you say that you know and have a greatest relationship with? Versus maybe know the least and have least strong of a relationship with. For it seems like most uh, Christians have a pretty good sense of the the Father. We have this image of uh, an older man, gray beard, loving disposition, eyes full of loving, piercing purity, right? Into each and every one of our souls. And then we have this image of the Son, too. We've read this Gospels enough. We have an image of who he was, his radicalness, his boldness, his kindness to the sinners and the wayward. and But then we get to the Holy Spirit, and it's obscure to say the least, right? What, what gives? What can we say about the Holy Spirit? Well, a lot, but I'll confine myself. I, it just, it comes down on a theological level to appreciate that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life, as our creed says, that the Holy Spirit is God. And it is God in relationship to the Father and the Son. And the way to appreciate that God is love 
a love that flows eternally from the Father and the Son eternally is receiving the Father and giving his love back. And this total self-giving free love is so real and so complete that the only way we can describe it is that this love is a third person. Beautiful, right? So St. Augustine, I appreciate he captures it in appreciating that because the Holy Spirit is God, we can say that the Holy Spirit is the gift of God. The gift of God. And I just want to um, let us linger with that for the Holy Spirit is a gift in that nothing that we could earn or merit or deserve, but it's a free gift given by God. And what is that gift? Well, that gift is participation in divine life, to put it at its most simple level, right? And again, it's um, nothing that we earn or deserve, but it is poured out. So it's poured out in a way that if we look at the scriptures, it is evident and apparent the way the Holy Spirit works, especially through the writer of Luke. Out of all of the Gospels, he's the one who has a particular attention to the power and the transforming effects, transformative effects of the Holy Spirit. So he wrote his gospel, Luke, and he also wrote the Acts of the Apostles. And do you remember when the Holy Spirit comes on the scene? Maybe you're tempted to say, Pentecost, Pentecost, that's when the Holy Spirit came, tongues of fire, and you would be um, <laughs> not totally wrong, but <laughs> you're right, but there's more, there's more. Luke shows very clearly the Holy Spirit comes on the scene at the very beginning. In the first chapter, we see those who are getting lit on fire with the Holy Spirit. Four, Gabriel comes to Zechariah in the temple and he announces that he will have a son, John the Baptist, who is filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we see the Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary, right? And these aren't just random. It's the Holy Spirit is being given to those who are receptive and are able to respond to the mission, right? Because John the Baptist, he has a mission. Mary is receptive and she has a mission to be the mother of God. In Luke 1, 41, we see Elizabeth is greeted by Mary. John the Baptist leaps in her womb and it says that she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Pentecost isn't even like in the horizon, right? And the Holy Spirit is on the moon, on the move, filling those with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Elizabeth is to be the mother of this incredible prophet. Zechariah finally gets his game together and he's filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesying that his son will go before the Most High to prepare his way. And then do you remember Simeon in the temple? This is Luke 2, 25. He's there and he sees Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and he takes the child in his arms and he prophesies that this will be the light to the nations. Glorious, right? So he has a mission too. And if you look throughout the rest of Luke, you see Jesus is led by the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit, he proclaims this good news to the poor, this liberty to the captives. Everything he does is in the Spirit. Why? to bring the divine life to all the world. And it's not until Acts that we see the Pentecost moment and we see these apostles going to the ends of the world, showing that nothing can stop the movement and the power of the Holy Spirit. Incredible, right? Okay, how about Joseph? What was Joseph's experience of the Holy Spirit? that's going on all around him, right? And the only connection that we have explicitly in scripture is from Matthew 1.20, where an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream. So this is after he's realized that Mary, who he's betrothed to, has conceived a child that's not his. And it's in this dream that the angel comes to him and says, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And this is kind of it that we see in terms of like an explicit reference of Joseph in the Holy Spirit. And so maybe with a critical mind, we could say, oh, so Joseph was left out. Everyone around him has this special mission. Everybody around him is receiving the Holy Spirit and being filled and being led in its power. But Joseph, no, he wasn't special. And we would be gravely misled for here's something that I just want to put out there that's one of the most 
distinctive qualities of Joseph's holiness. It's silent and it's hidden. The Holy Spirit was filling him. Why? Because he had a mission and he was perfectly docile to this participation in the divine life. Nothing that he did to earn it or deserve it, but he was chosen by God to be the foster father of his son, to be the husband of Mary, and so that we can know that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. How? Why? Well, we know the Holy Spirit, not because we can see it, but that we know it by its effects. Do you remember Jesus to Nicodemus? He's describing the Holy Spirit just like the wind, that we don't know where it comes from or where it goes. But we can feel it. We can feel it in the way that we can hear it as it goes through the trees. And this isn't to say that the Holy Spirit is a feeling, but that we know the Holy Spirit by its effects. For example, Paul says, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So if someone's able to say Jesus is Lord, we know that they have the Holy Spirit. And I just don't just mean like say it, but I mean, believe it. Do you think Joseph ever said that Jesus is Lord? Okay, he didn't say a single word in the gospel. Do Do you think that he ever had in the depths of his heart, the acknowledgement that my son, who I have been entrusted with, is the Lord? Yes, and then he has. Then we know that he has the Holy Spirit. St. Paul to the Galatians, he talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. So if Paul can capture all of this in one word, these fruits of the Holy Spirit, I think it would say freedom. I think it would say freedom, right? And not this freedom to do whatever one wants, but a freedom to dr- truly do what is good and what is leading to God. After Jesus, Joseph was the freest man to ever walk the earth. He wasn't ruled by fear or anxiety or wondering what other people were going to think or say about him. He was free. Why? Because he was living in the divine life. He was entrusted to Jesus and Jesus was entrusted to him. He had this fullest experience of life in this relationship with Jesus. So, maybe we can even wonder, where did Jesus learn his freedom? Right, supernaturally, his divinity was never separated from the Holy Spirit, so he was completely with the Holy Spirit at all times. But naturally, I think we can imagine that he learned it from Joseph in his goodness, in his faithfulness, in his gentleness and self-control. We know the Holy Spirit by its fruits, by its effects, and also by its gifts. Gifts, right? And that the Holy Spirit, because of Joseph's role, because of his dignity, would have showered upon him an abundance of these gifts. And so I was just thinking, right? Just thinking about some of these gifts of knowledge, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, fear of the Lord, and wisdom. I was thinking about just his fortitude. Like with that courageous heart, how he would have led his holy family out into the desert to go to Egypt, no matter what the cost, no matter what was waiting for him or courage, courage. Why? Because he had the Lord with him. I was thinking about piety, just the most tender care that he would have loved the Lord at all times. How about fear of the Lord? Awe and wonder as we know it. It's this gift of being awestruck in wonder at Jesus. And not in a way that he's like surprised because he doesn't really understand that Jesus is Lord. No, he knows that Jesus is Lord. And yet how he would have just been blown away at the simplest things that his son would have done, would have said, would have helped him in carving the wood, right? God, the maker of all of creation, is subject to needing a saw to cut this piece of wood and just with the awestruck wonder, this gift, that was Joseph, filled with the Holy Spirit every moment of his life. Ah, Joseph wants to bring you and I to a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit. If it's still obscure to us, how do we need St. Joseph to intercede for us? 
and just to lead us to a, a greater relationship and a greater openness to these gifts of the Holy Spirit so that our life might bear these fruits of all the love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, etc. So let's, with that intention, pray our litany of St. Joseph, asking for his intercession more and more in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and Prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, Grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And through the intercession of St. Joseph, our blessed Mother Mary, may Almighty God bless, keep, and protect each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, so good to be with you. Uh, I would encourage you, if you enjoyed this, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment too. If you'd like to support this podcast and the work of Dry Bones Ministries, please go to drybonespgh.org. Let's keep one another in prayer. I look forward to being with you tomorrow. God bless you, and St. Joseph, pray for us.